Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to quickly make pipes and wires using a couple of different methods. There's a, there's a couple of different ways you can do it. Uh, it's all personal preference, uh, but you can get some really nice results really, really fast. And if you stick around to the end, I'll show you how to make some rivets for your pipes as well as a little bonus. So let's get straight into it. So first of all, I'm going to look at uh, doing this one where you've got a really precise pipe with some 90 degree angles and uh, it just looks really clean and there's an easy way to do it. If we start off with a new uh, new file, if we add a plane, we make sure you click a uh, vertice selection and press M on your keyboard and merge to the center. So then you've got one vertice to play with. If you go in front view with the number one on your keypad. We can extrude this then very, very precisely in what we want. So if we extrude Z1, it'll go straight up to one, one meter. And then again, we could do X, E, X1 to go to the right and then EZ1 to go to the up again. So we've got this shape. This is the, say this is the pipe we wanted. To get those rounded edges, we have to select these two vertices, press Control, Shift and B, the bevel, and then we can do this. You can use a scroll wheel to change the amount of uh, segments, but then you can get this nice result of the bend. Before you, when you click then, this menu will come up on the side. If it hasn't, if it's down here, you just click to open it up. We can then, before we click off of it, we can uh, change however many segments there are, the shape of it. So if you wanted to invert it slightly, you could go that direction, but the standard shape is 0.5. And then when you're happy with it, you can just click off of it. So we've got this, this shape, which is kind of what we wanted in this. Next, you want to come out of edit mode with tab. We, we want to convert this to a curve because then we'll get these curve properties on the on the property panel on the right hand side. It's this green data looking uh, looking symbol. Go down to geometry, might be closed off, Click, open up geometry, and under bevel, where it says round, we can give it some depth. So I'll give it a 0.1 depth. And we can increase the resolution. So it's a bit nicer, a bit smoother. Obviously it's not quite completely smooth, but it is still it's still a curve at the minute once you're happy with how it looks and the shape of, it, of your pipe and everything we can then right click convert to the mesh now it's a mesh and we can then shade it smooth or shade it smooth and then you've got your pipe obviously then you can add more loops or like i said you could just extrude extrude scale extrude down make whatever you want on the on these pipes play around with it so that's the first simple way of doing it the next way I want to look at is combining two cylinders um, that you've already pre-made and creating a bend between them. So if we have, for example, uh, cylinder one and cylinder two, we just place that over there, but then we'll just make it a really odd angle that you want to join. Say you wanted to join these two together. You have a pipe going up here, pipe going down here, and you wanted to join these two together. Well, first of all, press click on both and press Control J. Then in edit mode, if we alt select the the edges, so the loops, if we press Control E to bring up our menu and click Bridge Edge Loops, then we can they automatically join together. But we can increase the amount of cuts here, and then you'll see there's an issue, <laughs> a very bad issue. <laughs> Why is that? So we got to, if we go back, back out of edit mode, what we want to do is press control A and apply basically everything that is, you need to apply the rotation, the scale and stuff, and then go back into edit mode. We'll try it again. Uh, control E and then click bridge edge loops. And then we can add a number of cuts. And it's, as I said, it's fixed now. <laughs> You've got to keep the errors in. So you guys, if you ever get the errors, then you know what to do. But yeah, that's uh that's another way, and obviously it's already a mesh, we could shade that smooth, and it's, it's a nice join between them. It really looks really clean. If you do forget the control E to get this menu up, you can always press F3 and then type for edge edge loops or whatever, and then, then you'll get the same thing coming up, and you can just change the settings on this right hand side. I always use that because the amount of times I forget what, which one it is is beyond, but you can always, always click up here on edge and then click bridge edge loops. There's multiple ways to find it, but yeah, it's just whatever you remember or whatever suits you best. 
So say you wanted to do some wiring. You have really, there are lots of bends, lots of twists and everything, however you want it in your model. The easiest way I found is similar to the first method we did, but instead we're gonna start with a curve this time. So we could start, say for example, with a Bezier curve. This is kind of what it looks like. As you guys may have seen, you can move it around, um, extrude it, play with these handles, however you want. You get a lot of flexibility with these kind of things. Um, literally go whatever angle you want to do. And then again, in the properties tab and geometry, we can just add some geometry to it like that. And up the resolution a bit. You'll see it's quite choppy though, in this case. Um, the, the, for some reason, the Bezier one doesn't give that clean of a result. You will probably have to convert it to um, a mesh and then add a subdivision modifier on it to make it nice, nicer. And then it's and then it's a lot cleaner. What we could do is use a path curve and um, it doesn't have the handles like uh, the other one does. So it's not as flexible in what you in, uh, how you want it, but you can get some really nice bends. It really makes the most out of these bends. And then when we add in, um, again, go down to bevel, add the geometry, it's a lot smoother than the, the other one was. It's not choppy. You don't even have to add subdivisions, you know, modifiers on afterwards. It's already nice. If you don't convert it to mesh, then you can easily adjust it afterwards if you wanted to, say, move the wire a different place or however you want to do it. You can use it for tubing, whatever, you know, any kind of thing. One I liked was this one, this kind of shape, the T shape of a pipe um, piece, which was a bit trickier to figure out. Um, but what we can do use is the loop tools add on a lot in this. So say for example, we add in, I'm going to just add in a cylinder, but we're going to give it like six vertices, right? And then I'm going to add another one, duplicate it, and I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees and scale it in the X direction. Uh, I'll apply the scale and everything. So we want to join this one and this one together. So it will be, it will create this kind of look to it. But, and I want to do, I want to do it using the bridge edge loops. What we can do first of all is uh, go into edit mode and create two, a loop cut there. So it's, uh, this is where it's going to join from this one to this one. And we need a loop cut in the middle because we need six vertices to play with. So as you, as you can see, if I solo this out, this will give us one, two, three, four, five. Four, five, six. Same as what the cylinder is underneath. So it's all going to match up. What we want to do then is delete these ones. We can select these and go into loop tool and press circle. And it's going to give us that perfect shape um, like the one underneath. It might not line up perfectly. We might need to tweak it a bit to match the other one. It doesn't want to show me. But we can figure that out after afterwards. Next, like before, we just want to control J and join these two pieces together. Select these edge loops and press control E. <laughs> control E and uh, bridge the edge loops. And they, they are nicely joined together. We could even dissolve this one so we don't need it. And then it, it looks quite nice and clean. It doesn't look as nice as this because obviously it's such a low poly. Um, that's why I didn't start with a 16 or 32 because you would have had to figure out how to make enough segments and you know in this top one to the bottom one to match them together. What we can do here is just add in a subdivision surface modifier, increase the view levels, and shade smooth, and then it'll, it'll look a bit nicer. If you want to add a loop, if you if you wanted to, you could add two loops here, two loops here, two loops here, and it'll change this bend in it on the inside. Um, but yeah, it's it's a lot nicer. Uh, if you did want to extrude these and scale and extrude them like this, it, it's very, uh, very beveled because of obviously sub subdivision modifier. Um, if we click this button, we can see the edges. If we select these ones, for example, and press shift E for creasing, and we can just add in a crease there and, uh, and then it's all good. Exactly what we want. As I said, a couple of different ways for you to make pipes and wiring, very quick, very easy. Um, it's just however, whatever personal, pre personal preference you want for your, your project.
personal preference for your project. Um, as I said, as a little bonus, I'm going to quickly show you how to do these rivets in, in one of these pipes, and then uh, we'll wrap up the video. So for example, you've got your, um, let's add a cylinder, I'll extrude it along the normal, which is Alt E, and then you can click extrude all the normals. Uh, we get this shape. For these, you obviously need a point, a point in the middle to work from. So what we can do is add a loop cut around the center there. And what we're going to do is we're going to just select one. Maybe select the next one. And then you can press Control Shift and the plus icon, the, the numpad on the, the, um, the numpad plus icon, and just select the pattern that you want. So we've got all this kind of pattern going on. We can press Control Shift and B for bevel in the vertices. And we'll just bevel it like this. It seems a bit crazy. You can change, obviously change the amount of segments and stuff here and the shape, but we don't need to worry about the shape so much. It's more the segments. Because what we're going to do is right click, loop tools, circle. And we're going to make them all circle so we can extrude up and then scale in. And then it's kind of like a nice quick rivet thing there. If you haven't already, just go and edit preferences, go on your add ons and add the loop tools like uh, add on. It's, it is really useful for a lot of things. That's it guys, I hope that was useful. It's such a really quick way of making multiple different pipes and uh, different ways of doing it. If you liked the video, please click the thumbs up icon and subscribe to the channel and I'll keep making more videos. Comment below if there's anything specific you guys want to learn about and uh, I'll catch you in the next video.